One of the comments that you hear in the forest tradition again and again is, it, is that it's possible to be right and wrong at the same time. When Anandachan uses that phrase, it usually refers to one or two things. One is that you've got the right teaching, but you're applying it in the wrong place. Another is that you're using the teaching for an unskillful purpose. And sometimes there's an overlap between the two. But let's start with the distinction. Right teaching, wrong place. When a John tells the story of riding in a truck with one of his lay students, and the truck is really dirty, unnecessarily so. And so he couldn't help but comment to the, the student who was driving the truck about how dirty his truck was. Wouldn't it be a good idea to clean it up a little bit? And the owner of the truck said, Ani Chang, it's inconstant. And as John said, he, he was right, yes, cleanliness is inconstant. But using that as an argument not to clean the truck is a misuse of the teaching. There's a similar case in the canon where a young monk has been asked by a sectarian, what is the result of action? And the young monk says, action results in stress, which is basically a Jain teaching. The sectarian says, I've never heard any Buddhist monk say that. You better go back and check that with the Buddha. So the young monk goes to see Venerable Ananda, and Ananda takes him to see the Buddha. And as the young monk is trying to explain his reasoning, another monk, Udayan, steps in and says, well, maybe he's thinking about the fact that all feelings are stressful and all actions result in feelings. And the Buddha says, no, that's not the time for that teaching. When you're asked about karma, the proper response is the three kinds of feelings. There are pleasant feelings, painful feelings, and neither pleasant nor painful. Because after all, the whole point of teaching about karma is to realize that there are things, actions that are skillful, actions that are unskillful, and actions that are mixed. If you were to say that all action ends in stress, then why bother with skillful actions? It defeats the purpose of that, type, that particular teaching. As for the teaching and all feelings being inconstant, stressful, not self, that serves a different purpose, and it's used at a different point in the practice. So when the truck driver was saying that his leaving his truck dirty as a sign of wisdom, understanding the inconstancy of all things, it was a misuse of the teaching. You try to be clean. One of the basic attributes of a good practitioner is you're clean about your place. The place where you live, the place where you meditate. Because that develops good habits. A habit of being meticulous, a habit of being on top of things. If you're slovenly in your personal habits, your meditation is going to be slovenly too. So when the issue of cleanliness comes up, it's not a time to be thinking about inconstancy, stress in that self. It's a time to be thinking about, how can I be more industrious? How can I be more diligent, both inside and out? The other way of being wrong at the same time that you're right is when you use the Dharma for arguments or for one absenceship. It's very easy to get into Dharma discussions where the point of the discussion becomes who's right and who's wrong. And a lot of conceit can develop around being right in discussions like that. And even though you don't abandon conceit until the end of the path, it's a good idea to avoid those kinds of discussions as much as possible. You don't want to aggravate it, because the kind of conceit that's useful in the path has nothing to do with winning arguments has everything to do with the fact that there are people who have gained awakening. They're human beings. I'm a human being. Why can't I gain awakening, too? 
The conceit of proving yourself right and proving other people wrong, though, is not the kind of conceit that's useful on the path, so you have to watch out. This doesn't mean that there is no room for Dharma debates at all, but you have to be very careful, making sure that both sides are trying to find the truth. Or if one side is obviously wrong and spreading wrong views around, you make a statement of right view, but you try to leave it at that. So you don't get into the wrongness of conceit. The Buddha compares it to grasping a snake. He says, if you grasp the Dharma wrong, it's like grasping a snake in the wrong place. If you grasp it by the tail, it'll turn around and bite you. Now you do have to grasp the Dharma, but you grasp it for the sake of holding on to the principles you need for your own practice. After all, the views of right view are not designed for arguments. That long list of views that the Buddha avoided about whether the world was eternal, not eternal, finite, infinite, on down the line. Those views were designed to get into arguments. People would state their view and say, only this is true, everything else is worthless. That statement right there is just a challenge. Anyone want to argue? But when the Buddha stated the definition of suffering, its origination, its cessation, the path to its cessation, he's basically saying, here, do this and you'll be able to put an end to suffering. It's a very different attitude, a very different kind of view. It's the view that's part of the raft that goes off over the flood of wrong views, or the views that get people into arguments. The flood of views will kind of sweep you away. The raft of right view can get you across. It's all a matter of how you hold on. In the case of the snake, you take a forked stick, you hold its head down, and then you grasp it right at the neck. And then even though the snake may writhe around you, you're holding on to it in a safe way. So how do you avoid being wrong even when you're right? In the case of understanding where a teaching should be applied, always think about how it fits in with the Four Noble Truths. For instance, with the three characteristics or the three perceptions, they're useful for developing dispassion for suffering, developing dispassion for the origination of suffering. That's where they're there. If you use them for another purpose, that's gone wrong. If you see that the pleasures of sensuality are very impermanent and they involve a lot of stress, okay, you're using the perceptions rightly so that you can gain a sense of dispassion for your sensuality. As for Dharma discussions, it's good to have some humility about your views. As the Buddha said, for most of us, our views are based on either believing in a particular tradition, believing in a teacher, or reasoning things out by analogy, or just comparing our various views and seeing what fits with what other views that we've already accepted. He says, in none of these cases is that a guarantee that you've got the truth. So think about that. For most of us, that's where our views come from. Reasoning by analogies, or reasoning by things fitting together, making sense together, or a tradition that we believe, or a teacher we believe, or a conviction. As he says, if you want to safeguard the truth, you say, well, this is my conviction, I'll leave it at that. Or well, this is what makes sense to me, I'll leave it at that. The more humility we have around our views, the more we'll be able to step back from them and see where they're wrong, or see where we're applying them in the wrong place. And have a strong sense of when discussions are getting out of hand, or when a discussion is going nowhere, and you pull out for the sake of harmony in the group. And there's so much disharmony in the world right now. So much harsh speech, divisive speech. It 
It's good to have a community where people are trying to learn how to live together and restrain themselves from getting involved in the topics that could break the group apart. I mean, there are all kinds of things that we could be arguing about, but is it worth it? What does it accomplish? We're trying to create a community where there is harmony so that people can practice and find some joy in the practice. So if there's time for discussion, try to think about what would actually be helpful. We're not here to prove ourselves right and other people wrong. We're all coming from wrong. If our views were totally right, we wouldn't be suffering. We wouldn't have to practice anymore. The fact that we have to practice shows that we still have something to learn. So if we have the attitude that we're all trying to learn together, that can get rid of a lot of wrong speech and a lot of the wrong uses of right views. <laughs>